Hi, this is another video by Pet Rock. Uh, today I'm working on my 06 Harley Night Train. It's an FX STBI. Today I'm going to be changing out the uh, transmission fluid. This bike has the stock transmission, which is a five speed. This procedure is pretty much the same for all soft tails, regardless of year. The only variation would probably be just how much fluid to put in and how you check it to make sure you put enough in. So the first thing you want to do is you want to jack the bike up however you want to do it. I'm using an old Craftsman motorcycle jack that I picked up when I bought this bike new back in 06. Whenever you jack up a bike you want to make sure you strap it down. So in my case I take a tie down strap, tie it to the uh, hooks on the lift, loop it up and around, put a towel in the, uh, around the neck, put the strap through around the towel so it doesn't scuff up or pinch any of the wires that are in here. That goes down and loops around and uh, connects to the other side on the lift. So you're going to be climbing underneath this bike as you're doing your, uh, this oil change because the drain plug is underneath the bike and you can't really get to it very easily with the bike on its side stand, let alone have it drain out without getting all over the place. So you want to have the bike upright and on a lift and securely strapped down. Don't try to do this job without this bike strapped down, otherwise you, you could easily have the bike fall off. I've heard plenty of stories of guys who put their bike up on a lift and don't strap it down thinking that they're gonna be able to, they're gonna be in and out really quickly and there's not enough time or whatever. They're trying to save some time and all of a sudden the wonders of gravity take over and the bike falls off and you damage your bike. So just strap it down, it only takes a minute, and it's worth your safety and worth your life in this case since you're going to be underneath the bike. So the first thing you want to do is remove the fill plug for the transmission, which is right here. It's a 3 8 Allen head. There isn't a, much, a lot of torque on this thing, so it actually should be pretty easy to get off that. The only thing you have to worry about is hitting this uh, metal pipe right here and uh, damaging it. If you're worried about damaging it, you can put some tape right here to prevent any uh, scuff marks. So you take your Allen key wrench and loosen the drain plug. Drop the Allen key on the floor and just loosen it and just set it aside like that. That's all we're doing. We're not, we're not going to remove it right now. You want to keep this here so that you don't uh, accidentally drop anything in the, uh, in the transmission as you're working. Okay, to find the drain plug, you just basically look at the transmission right here and you follow it down underneath and in between the two shock absorbers there's a little drain plug right there. It's close to this frame rail right here, so that's why you want to have the jack as forward as possible so that uh, you can get access to it. So that drain plug is either, you can use either a 5 8 socket or a quarter inch Allen key uh, because this uh, shock is in the way, so it's hard to get a socket on that one. So I have a really long Allen socket that I use. They're made by uh, Nico or Naiko Tools. Um, works pretty well. I got an, I got a metric and a uh, standard set. Um, I think I got these off of Amazon. So you want to put your Allen key or socket, whatever it is, in the hole and just loosen it. Make sure you have a drain pan underneath to catch any oil that comes out. Just crack it. If it does become difficult, you might want to switch to using a socket or another type of wrench in order to uh, get this thing off because uh, this bolt is quite soft. It's probably made of aluminum. I'm not really sure what. Most likely it's aluminum, uh, which means it's going to be soft and you can easily strip it out, strip out the Allen head. So once you've gotten it loose enough, drop your Allen head. Try to reinsert it blindly. Now you just unscrew it manually. And once it starts to leak a little bit, you can pull out the nut and let it drop like that. I hope I got all that on camera. So in this case, you can actually see my uh, transmission fluid is looks pretty clean. However, it does have 15,000 miles on it. Just take the uh, bolt and clean it off, paying special attention to the magnet on the tip right there. You don't want to see a whole lot of metal shavings. You'll probably see a little bit, but you don't want to see a whole ton. If you see a ton, then you've got some transmission problems and uh, you should probably get them checked out. But other than that, like in my case, it was just a little bit of uh, metal goo, which is nothing. And then you want to inspect the rubber O-ring on the bottom. So in my case, it's actually looking pretty good, almost like it was brand new. 
If yours is damaged in any way, like it has a crack in it or it's ripped or um, it's got some kind of wear or anything like that, or you just want to replace it because you feel like replacing it, you don't have to go to Harley to buy a new O-ring. You can pick up one of these O-rings pretty much at any auto parts store. It's just a standard O-ring. There's nothing special about it. I picked up a set of eight from a local auto parts store. It's made by a company called O-Tite, O-T-I-T-E. There again, it's nothing special. It's just a standard O-ring. You don't need to um, don't need to get the Harley brand uh, and pay out the nose for it. I think I paid like two bucks for this entire uh, eight pack, or probably less than that. It's been years. My first oil change, I bought this, and that was. Yeah, back in 06. <laughs> anyway, and it's 2014 right now. So all you need is a two millimeter width, which is the rubber uh, width from here to here. You need a 10 millimeter inner diameter, which is from here to here, and 14 millimeter outer diameter from here to here. And that's it, it's just a standard O-ring. Anyway, you don't need to replace the O-ring unless it's damaged. If it's not damaged, you, you'll be just fine. So some people like to put Teflon tape or uh, uh, Teflon goo um, around the threads here to help steal the drain plug. I don't like doing that. Uh, I've never had a problem. I've had this bike since brand new. Uh, it's at 75, 76,000 miles, somewhere in the middle there um, right now. And I've changed the transmission fluid every 15,000 miles like clockwork or almost like clockwork. So that's four times I've changed the transmission fluid and I've never had a, um, a leak. I've never had a problem with it draining, uh, sorry, with it leaking out uh, around the O-ring. Um, so just as long as you keep the O-ring in good shape and make sure and replace it when it's damaged, you should be fine. Okay, once it's done draining, you want to take a rag and wipe off around the uh, opening, making sure there's no debris or dirt or whatever going around that. You want a clean surface so that the uh, uh, inside the hole slightly and also outside so that the O-ring will make a good uh, seal when you install it. So now you take your drain plug and screw it in by hand. You want to make sure not to cross thread it. You've got it finger tight. You want to uh, set up a torque wrench between 14 and 21 foot pounds. Uh, I like to take that value and just half it, so 17 and a half foot pounds in this case, and torque it down. Next, remove up top and remove the dipstick for the transmission. And we want to clean it off with a nice rag. You also want to take note of its O-ring and making sure that it's not damaged. I don't have the actual spec on the uh, on the size for this O-ring, but it's like the others. It's just a standard O-ring. You could take this one to your local auto parts store and just pick up another one uh, pretty cheaply. This is actually the one that came on the bike from the factory. I've never replaced it because it's never been damaged enough to require it. Um, you should just inspect the dipstick as well. Um, sometimes the chrome will start to come off on it a little bit. Don't worry about that too much. Uh, the chrome is a lot softer metal than the gears that are made in the uh, transmission and the transmission will just basically pu uh, pulverize it and uh, it'll end up on the magnet on your uh, drain plug. Anyway, so you want to clean off the uh, hole where the dipstick goes in, making sure that no debris gets into the transmission. Next we've got to put fluid back in the transmission. So what type of fluid kind of depends on you. The service manual calls for 20W50. There are those who uh, like to put ATF fluid in. Um, there are others like myself who prefer to put in uh, um, 75W90 gear oil. It's a transmission, it's gears, it should have gear oil. That's just my opinion. Uh, that's what I've been running in this bike since almost new. Yeah, I'm sticking with it, haven't had any problems. Anyway, so you take a long spout, funnel, stick it in the hole, you get a uh, measuring cup of some form that will measure out between 20 and 24 ounces of fluid. You want to put 20 in first and then check the level. If the level is good, you stop there. If the level is low, then you add more up to 24 ounces. Okay, next you want to check the, uh, the fluid level. For this bike and this transmission, uh, you want to check the fluid level with the bike in the upright position, upright and level. You take the dipstick and you see this little thicker part of the dipstick. You want to stick that in so that the dipstick is just resting on the top thread. You don't want to screw it all the way in, you just want it in there flat like, like that. Then you pull it out and you look at the fluid level. But in this case, it is just below the F. So I need to add a little bit more fluid uh, to fill this up. Okay, so I've added another couple ounces of fluid, just two. Recheck. 
So let's sit there like that, pull it out. And now, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, it's kind of hard to tell because the dipstick is chrome, um, but you want the fluid level to be within here, from here to here. And then right now I'm in dead middle, so I'm perfect. So all I needed was uh, 22 ounces. Okay, now you take the dipstick, uh, make sure to wipe it off, make sure there's no debris on it, and you stick it in the hole and thread it in a couple threads by hand. Um, make sure to get it in straight. Because of this odd angle, it's very easy to cross thread. Just be careful uh, and you should be fine. Okay, next you want to take a torque wrench uh, and set it to between 25 and 75 inch pounds and uh, torque this down. So what I like to do is take, it, take the half of the torque value, uh, so in this case 50 inch pounds and torque it down. So now we're done, just take the bike for a test drive, run it through all the gears, and uh, you're pretty much good to go. I hope this video helped you out. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, list them in the uh, comment section below. If you like this video, please click the, uh, the thumbs up button. If you wanna see more videos like this one, uh, subscribe.